I'm joined now by Aaron Murphy. He is the Des Moines Bureau Chief for the Gazette newspaper of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Aaron, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm jealous. I normally, I have to say, the caucuses are a little later this year. I have spent several New Year's um, in Des Moines with you. Uh, wouldn't trade those experiences for the world. Uh, but look, what do, you, what do you know on the ground that we can't see from our studios here uh, in Washington, particularly around uh, what's going on with Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis uh, and whether or not he's going to end up surviving uh, the outcome of the Iowa caucus or not? Yeah, there's no better place than New Year's in Iowa, Casey. Um, it, it's it's um, what we're seeing on the ground matches up fairly well with the polling that you just described. Um, former President Trump just seems to still have uh, a solid grasp on the Republican Party here in Iowa. He, he There's a lot of interest in him when he holds events. A lot of people still coming out to him, and, and you don't see that level of enthusiasm uh, for candidates like Governor DeSantis and Ambassador Haley. They're getting a look, don't get me wrong. Iowa Republicans are coming out and they're checking out Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley, but it's just nothing like what you see um, and what, what you hear when you talk to people about the former president. Yeah. What, I mean, how would you um, explain that when you talk to, to voters? I mean, what do you hear them say about it? Is it just that he is a former president, he's basically an incumbent, uh, is it that they're not, you know, no one else has managed to, you know, rise high enough to, to gain their notice? I mean, what do they tell you? I think you might have touched on it a little bit there. It's like having an incumbent in the race. And and Iowa Republicans here, the, uh, the people who are still supporting Donald Trump, they like what he did as president. They like the policies that he backed. They like that he was able to oversee the, um, the, the addition of conservative justices to the Supreme Court, they're very happy with his term as president. They view that as a better time than the last four years, and they think that he deserves another term. And, and, and the vast majority of them are not shaken by the legal issues or the, the, the rhetoric that he sometimes gets into. None of, none of that bothers the people who support Donald Trump. They look at what he did in office, they like it, and they want another four years of that. Hmm. Can I ask you, uh, Aaron, I mean, for, for people who don't haven't spent as much time in the state as, you know, those of us who are our campaign reporters, um, Iowa does, it, it, it's gone red in recent years, but it, it has been a purple state in the past. It has Cedar Rapids. Uh, there's a ton of Democrats who live uh, in Cedar Rapids where your uh, paper is based. Um, what do you hear from them when they talk about the race and President Biden in particular. I mean, how nervous are Democrats about the state of things right now? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of unease and, you know, they see the general election polls and see how close they are with the prospective matchups or, or in some cases with President Biden trailing um, in, in some of those. So, so there's concern, I think, uh, like a lot of Democrats across the country, Iowa Democrats are trying to break through and, and uh, a messaging and, and, and portray an image that, you know, the economy is in good shape is, is what they will say. And that um, they lean on the infrastructure bill that the president um, was able to get passed and, and try to portray a positive image of what's happened in the next three years, knowing that that's somewhat of an uphill climb right now when you look at national polling and the, and the national mood. So um, they, they, they support President Biden here in Iowa, they like the things he's done largely, but but yeah, definitely some unease when when they see those numbers. Uh, very briefly, what number does Ron DeSantis have to hit in 18 days? Do you think uh, for his campaign to avoid a collapse? That's such a great question, um, and no one knows the answer. Just, I know if that. you're just asking, <laughs> <laughs> if you're just asking me, because I think that is the question for these last 18 days that you, you noted up to the caucus. Can either Governor DeSantis or Nikki Haley have a surge? It's got to at least get into the 20s, is my personal opinion. You, 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 a part of Iowa is performance against expectations. Governor DeSantis has been floating around in those high teens. He's got to show something stronger than that on caucus night for uh, people in New Hampshire, South Carolina, et cetera, to give him a serious look. Yeah, super smart. All right, Aaron Murphy, Des Moines Bureau Chief for the Gazette. Thank you for joining us. I hope you'll come back before the caucus. I know you're real busy, so I appreciate you spending some time with us. Anytime. Thanks. All right. See you soon.